Hey guys, welcome or welcome back to my channel. So, when Megan announced Act 2 of her Megan album was coming out, I honestly thought it was a terrible idea. First of all, the first record did not do much in terms of commercial performance, which I know is not that important, trust me, I get that. But at the same time, we cannot pretend that commercial performance of a record is not indicative of one's success in the music industry, especially when it comes to an artist like Megan Thee Stallion, who, despite constantly trying to remind us that she is an independent artist now, still gets pushed and promoted by her management, Rock Nation, and her distributors, Warner Music, like she is a high selling, super in demand. Um, signed artist and from many angles she is in demand you know she very much looks like the hottest thing in pop culture right now in terms of rap music and hip-hop and even with her current industry bestie Glorilla killing it she's still like at the forefront of hip-hop and rap and pop culture music as it pertains to females does that make sense but anyway her music is not selling as well as it should be so that made me wonder what was the purpose of this album or rather this deluxe reissue of an album that hasn't even gone platinum yet like it's not even gold so what gives let's get into the track listing and then we'll talk about my opinions after that you can skip this part if you're not interested i'll leave the sections in the description so let's start bigger in texas is the opening track on act two and it's looking like this is the track that they're trying to push to bring more attention to the record it's not bad i like the beat it's really punchy. The lyrics, however, are where I'm not a fan. And this is where the song sort of goes downhill for me. Yet again, she's dragging her supposed ops. We've heard these things from Megan so much now that like they really have no meaning anymore. Maybe she's using newer, clever wordplay to diss her haters, but essentially it's the same old thing that we've heard over and over again. She's the best she is you know killing the rap game she's super rich like we get it you're good but it's getting tired at this point like give us something new and the flow the flow it's all the same the same flow for the past i don't know literally since the beginning of her career it's all the same someone needs to tell megan that just because she's a good lyricist and quick on her feet with words does not mean her songs always go hard. It's more than just being able to write good raps. It's about how they are performed and how interesting the performances are and Megan is consistently lacking in that part of her craft. Someone needs to tell her this. Track number two, Bourbon, another track that talks about how much better she is than other people. Okay, track number three, number one, Roll. This is actually a really good one. The chorus is really fun. She's basically talking about how men should be chasing women and not the other way around. I liked it. Rock Steady featuring Flo Millie is one that I had a lot of hopes for. Like, I really like Flo Millie. I think she's great. I think she has a really fun way of delivering her raps, unlike the way Megan's flows are very one way. But on this track, she basically copies Meg's flows and I did not like it. And the beat too was also kind of disappointing. It sounds good in the beginning, kind of reminds me of something that early 2000s Sierra or Missy Elliott would be singing on, but it quickly feels lacking getting to the end. It's like they try to copy a similar flow from that time period but it doesn't really have the essence that made the earlier stuff so impactful number five best friends i really like this one i like her leaning more into her career bag she sounds much calmer when she's singing about girls than guys maybe she sung more positively about guys in the past but i've just never noticed it men just seem to piss her off more and her singing too it's not bad next track is mamushi featuring twice i'm sorry but this did not need a remix the original was already good enough mostly because of the featured rapper yuki shiba but this new one just proves how some remixes are really not needed. If they really wanted to put out a newer version of the song to push as a single, it might have been a better idea to 
add twice onto yuki shiba's version but yeah this was so unnecessary and also twice sounded terrible yuki had this effortlessly cool chill attitude with his delivery twice was doing this sensual vibe that just was not a match for the song tyg featuring spirit box i really love what spirit box did here at the beginning of the song i loved their performance on this track it was so good i'll have to check them out I also liked Megan's part, but Spirit Box really stole the show on this track for me. Next is Fall In Love. It's a bop, that's all. It's so good to me. Like, I don't even know why I can't explain it. And honestly, I don't really care to. Maybe it's because it's so different from the other stuff on the album or the other stuff that Megan has put out in general, but this is really good. It's a bop. Like a freak is something. Good for her, you know? I like when artists explore new stuff. Sometimes they work, sometimes they don't. They clearly didn't work for me on this track, but good for her, she tried something new. Never play featuring Aram from BTS, You Think I Love Him, Motion and Right Now are fine. Nothing about those songs stood out enough to me for me to hate them, but I also didn't like them. I'm really indifferent towards them. So yeah, overall, I'm gonna give this album a 6 out of 10. I didn't think it was terrible. In fact, I actually rather enjoyed this one more than the standard edition, which says a lot. Um, to me, there are more highlights on this reissue, and that says a lot. This reissue could have been much better if she had taken the best parts from each half of like the first one and act two and combined them to make like a solid 15 track reissue that would have had a higher chance of sustaining commercial success. But yeah, my favorites so far are TYG, Fall in Love, and Best Friends. Now, I wanted to talk about the existence of this album. I've been thinking a lot about why Megan is releasing so much new music. At first, I wanted to say that maybe this is a sign of weakness, you know, that her regular releases are not doing as well. They're not making the impacts that she intended them to have. So she's resulting to saturate in the market with as many songs as she can possibly put out in hopes that she will strike gold with one of them and catch another stable hit because it's been a while since she's had one of those, right? I think her last stable hit was probably a WAP in 2020. It's been a while. For years now, Megan has struggled to achieve even a piece of the musical relevance that she had around 2020 to 2021. His, her most recent number one single, was meant as a diss song to Nicki and her other supposed ops, but that can hardly be classified as a hit. Even though it went to number one, it simply didn't have the longevity that her other songs have had in the past. The standout song on the standard edition of Megan Mamushi, which a lot of us thought would definitely become a massive hit because it's a genuinely good and catchy song went nowhere after a few weeks like like i don't know how her team was able to fumble such a potentially massive hit single that song was a missed moment the fact that they were able to let that hit song go i i don't know what they're thinking you know maybe she does need the big record label to really seize and grab onto a moment like that because mamushi was a clear hit i don't know how they let that get past them but anyway even though i still feel like she's saturated in the market it really isn't that different from what other male rappers and artists in general have been doing for a few years now like chris brown does it drake definitely does it morgan wallen that country artist he does it even taylor swift who arguably doesn't need to saturate the market as much as she has in the last few months also does it it's very normal nowadays to pack your albums with as many songs as you possibly can to give yourself a higher chance of catching a hit but i think megan and this is really no shade whatsoever seems to be using this album to stay relevant and show us her range by adding more songs and collaborating with different artists she's trying to reach newer audiences and to keep her already existing fan base engaged and i think that's a good idea because since her recent music hasn't been as huge releasing more could help her maintain visibility in the very crowded music industry and possibly find another big track and the very crowded music industry and as an independent artist experimenting 
with her style, trying new stuff is always going to be like a great way to expand her audience. But anyway, let me know what you guys think about this in the comment section down below. Did you enjoy Megan Act 2? Um, let me know in the comment section down below. Thanks for sticking around and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.